Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher once said, nothing has such power to broaden the mind as the ability to investigate systematically and truly all that comes under thy observation in life. Respected principal, vice principals, senior supervisor, academic coordinators, guests, judges, contestants, teachers, parents, and my dear students. On behalf of the department of EVS, Indian School Alwadi Al Kabir Primary Wing, I, Sagaya Mary, and my co-host, Bibi Khutuja, wish you all a warm good evening and welcome you all to the first ever happening event of grade five, Eureka India at 75 Symposium. This initiative is taken by the Department of EVS of the Primary Wing to provide an opportunity to the students to broaden their understanding of a topic or a problem, to make decisions about the problem and propose solutions to it. Travel light, live light, spread light, be the light. The strongest light is the light that shines within you. Use it to lead the way of your life. Let us witness the lighting of the lamp and commence the event. True prayer is neither a mere mental exercise nor a vocal performance. It is far deeper than that. It is a spiritual transaction with the creator of heaven and earth. I now call upon Master Mithil Venkatesh to lead us into a short prayer.
Thank you, Mithil. That was indeed soulful. Now, I call upon the deputy head girl of the Indian school Alwadi Al Kabir primary section, Ms. Erina Jane, to present the welcome address for today's evening. A very cheerful evening to one and all present here. As we all have gathered here to celebrate 75 years of Indian independence together with Eureka, You Know, You Grow Season 4. On behalf of the EDS department, I, Irina Jane, Deputy Head Girl of ISWK Primary, extend a warm welcome to our principal, vice principals, senior supervisor, academic coordinators, teachers, parents, and all my dear friends. It is my pleasure to welcome our distinguished judges who are gracing the occasion with their esteemed presence. I also welcome the, all those enthusiastic audience who have joined us live on YouTube. Coinciding with the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, we at ISWK take the opportunity to commemorate this momentous occasion which has a very special place in all our hearts. To reinvent the education system and give students a break from the traditional classroom learning environment, the Department of EVS is here again with an exciting event, India at 75 Symposium, under the banner of Eureka, You Know, You Grow Season 4, which will provide a new platform for young minds to achieve and explore new horizons of knowledge and will enhance the intellect of students. Lehro se dar kar no ka paar nahi hoti, koshish karne walo ki kabhi haar nahi hoti. Nan hi chiti jab dana ahli ka chalti hai. Chalti diwaro par saun baat salti hai. Man ka vishwaas rago me sahas bharta hai. Chad ka ghirna to match up with the poem by Shri Harivansh Rai Bachchan, you will witness our 10 finalists exploring new heights with their content and presentation. We all wish our super talented, enthusiastic and excited participants the very best as we look forward to an impressive session. I am sure you all will have a great learning experience witnessing our young speakers live in action. So sit back and enjoy this exhilarating ride. Thank you. Thank you, Erina. That was a great start to the program. The fragrance of flowers spread only in the direction of the wind. But the goodness of a person spreads in all directions. The quote above is very myth-filling to our dear vice principals, Ms. Chachikala Prabhat and Mr. Ernst Schwann. Your endless care, guidance, and support prove that you are truly great leaders. On behalf of the Department of EVS, I now take the opportunity to invite our vice principals to share their thoughts, encourage our finalists, and address the audience. Over to you, sir, ma'am, and sir. <laughs> okay, I think each of us are waiting for the other to start. Uh, so good evening once again to all our esteemed guests, our teachers.
teachers and of course our students who are all set uh, to light the fire on stage because I can see their confidence. And I also know that the three most important P's to the success of any event or any personal endeavor is planning, uh, preparing for it, and also being persistent and determined about its success. And the EVS department is all set uh, to see the success of this program. So it's all the best to the entire staff and all the best to our students too. Okay, do well. And also let me thank Nina ma'am as well as Suma for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. All the best once again. Thank you ma'am. Thank you, Shashi, ma'am. Uh, once again, good evening, everybody, and a very special good evening to our two special judges. Um, children, as I said at the very start, um, the uh, event itself is an important event because it's celebrating India at 75. And uh, today, when we speak of, you know, a lot of competitions that are taking place around us, it is so much to do with basically outside the science and technology and mathematics and whatnot and everything, you know. This time, we decided to throw this into your lab to see what you have to offer us when we talk about India at 75 from that perspective. Now, as Shashi Ma'am said, those three important P's are there. I would say you've come this far because not, uh, you know, you're just anybody. No, 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 you're not anybody. You come this far because you are somebody who has something in you, something more, something different. And you have that hunger in you to go for what is called is the best. So you are the best already from the group that has, uh, you know, uh, participated along with you. And having come this far, you've got to keep telling yourself, you've got to be bolder, you've got to be stronger. And as they say in the Olympics, you've got to be faster. Well, in this case, faster in memory and knowledge, okay? So go for it. I wish all of you all the very best. May the best contestant win. And always remember, whatever you take away from here, whether you win or not today, what's important is you're taking away with you a very, very vital uh, you know, piece of experience. This experience is going to definitely help you in the very next competition that you take part in. Because whatever you learn today, is always an added block to your successes as you go along. It's not necessarily a gold, a silver, or a bronze. It's what you pick up with you and what you take along with you that is so, so very important. So once again, all the very best to all of you. I'm uh, impatiently looking forward to, you know, watch how our performers are going to do. And uh, thank you once again and all the best. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, sir. That was indeed motivating and inspirational. Leaders instill in their people a hope for success and a belief in themselves. Positive leaders empower people to accomplish their goals. It's my pleasure to invite our EVS Academy Coordinator, Ms. Ambika Padmanabhan, to introduce the judges for the evening who have accepted our invitation to share in this unique experience by serving as judges. Thank you, Ms. Mary. A cheerful good evening to one and all. We are very much honored to have two experienced judges amidst us who will assist us in getting a better judgment using their subject expertise and rich experiences in the field of pedagogy. With absolute pleasure and excitement, I introduce our first judge for the event, Ms. Suma Senu, middle school science teacher of ISWK. She is a highly motivated, enthusiastic, and dedicated educator who wants all children to be successful learners. With a vast teaching experience of 24 years, our sessions are always stimulating, encouraging, and adaptive to the varied needs of students. 
with pure joy and delight, let me introduce the second judge for the event, Ms. Zina Alex, middle school science teacher of IFWK. She is an enthusiastic teaching professional with around 22 years of teaching experience and has worked in few of the Indian schools in Oman. She is an encouraging educator who offers plenty of positive reinforcement to maintain a calm and controlled classroom. We were delighted to hear of your acceptance to judge IFWK's India at 75 Symposium organized by the Department of Avians. Warm welcome to both of you and wish you have a pleasant time listening to our budding speakers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Ambika. Dear Mams, we believe that your notable experience and expertise will help us achieve the objective of this competition. Dear students, anything is possible until your heart stops beating. Don't look at the competition and say, you are going to do it better, but say, you are going to do it differently. Dear audience, let me introduce you all to the 10 contestants who will be competing for the Eureka India at 75 Symposium, grade five. I am sure you all are aware of the order of your presentation and are prepared for the contest. All the best to all our spontaneous, determined, ambitious, dynamic, and talented contestants of the evening. Bibi is Mary. I am feeling energetic this evening as I just had soothing herbal tea before I could log into the session. Wow, good Mary. We need it to boost our immune system, especially during this pandemic. A gift from Ayurveda. Very true, Bibi. Dear audience, fasten your seat belts and here we go. Let's begin the contest with the first contestant coming up on the stage. I call upon the first contestant for the evening, Mivan Manotra of 5G. Let's see what he has to say about Ayurveda and yoga for immunity. Thank you, ma'am. I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. A warm good evening to one and all present here. Today I will be speaking on the topic Ayurveda and Yoga for Immunity. Ayurveda and Yoga are not merely two separate but Related healing disciplines of India. Each has its unique place and function. Ayurveda and Yoga work together to enhance their great benefits to all levels of living. Immunity refers to the body's ability 
to prevent the invasion of pathogens. To be immune means to be protected. Ayurveda being an old medicinal system that originated in India and means life knowledge, it is holistic, which means doing the body and mind as a whole and helps in boosting the immune system. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root, yug, meaning to join or to yoke or to unite. Yoga focuses on bringing harmony between the mind and the body and also helps in improving the immunity. Ayurveda and yoga originated in India more than 5,000 years ago. The similarities between the two are abundant, which include cleansing practices, diet and lifestyle, nutrition, attitude, exercises, meditation, mantras and rituals for healing the entire body and boosts our immune system. Ayurveda is one of the oldest, most elaborate forms of traditional medicine in the world. There are many benefits of Ayurveda that we are not aware of. Let's take a look on a few amazing benefits of Ayurveda. Through Ayurveda, we can promote positive health, boost the immunity, creativity and higher awareness. Ayurveda provides us with healthy living strategies, balanced nutrition, lifestyle and reduced stress. It also improves concentration together with immune boosting herbs. Let me ask you this question. Do you need a perfect glow and shiny hair? Yes, isn't it? Ayurveda has proven benefits on the body as well as on our skin. Ayurvedic immunity boosters can help protect the body from various diseases and infections and also assist in maintaining body weight, blood pressure, digestion, body growth and many other aspects of our well-being. Yoga is unlike other forms of exercise that focus only on certain parts of the body. Yoga works on everything. There are many benefits of yoga too that we are not aware of. Let's take a look on a few amazing benefits of yoga. Yoga improves posture, increases flexibility, regulates energy and boosts immunity, etc. According to the National Institutes of Health, scientific evidence shows that yoga supports stress management, mental health, mindfulness, healthy eating, weight loss, quality sleep, and bo also boosts immunity system, etc. These are the few yoga poses to boost our immune system. This post is a summary of one of the research projects conducted at the University of Idaho, UI, by faculty and students of Washington State University to explore how mindfulness during the practice of yoga could be related to changes in the body image, outcomes, and reasons for exercise over time. It was found that mindfulness during yoga was linked to the improvement in body image and internal reasons for exercise over time. It is important to reintegrate yoga and Ayurveda to bring out the full healing and spiritual potential of each. The key to a comprehensive yoga therapy and yoga system, medicine, lies in restoring yoga's connection with Ayurveda. Ever wonder why our favorite actors look so young always? Of course, makeup. But one of the primary reasons behind their youthful skin and bodies is Ayurveda. And they do yoga. And we are well aware of the results. It is a common saying, we wear our health on our faces. Today, there is a new revival of yoga and Ayurveda in India and their expansion throughout the world. India's great gurus are continuing to promote yoga and Ayurveda 
and expand its reach both inside the country and to the world overall. Ayurveda and yoga are India's greatest gifts to mankind. Yoga and Ayurveda are two of the greatest sources of soft power of India. Guru Kiran Vyas, who runs the Kovan Open University of Yoga and Ayurveda in France, was the first person to introduce yoga at UNESCO. He says, yoga and Ayurveda are the two greatest gifts of India to humanity, to planet Earth. I tell them that the health of a human being depends on the health of our planet. Ayurveda and yoga have made people become more and more aware of this. Yoga and Ayurveda focus on strengthening the immunity and provide effective, accessible and affordable means to fight the negative impacts of COVID-19. Few healthy tips to stay healthy. Drink at least 8 to 10 glasses of water daily. Get a sound sleep of 6 to 8 hours. Eat healthy food and say no to junk food. Adopt Ayurveda and yoga for a healthy lifestyle. With a fast-paced lifestyle that leaves no scope for rejuvenation or relaxation, Ayurveda guarantees reduction in stress and anxiety. Regular practice of yoga, meditation, breathing exercises, massages and herbal treatments allow the body to calm down, detoxify and rejuvenate. I would like to conclude my presentation with some golden words. The more you let Ayurveda and yoga become the basis for your living, the easier living gets. Thank you all and have a great evening ahead. Any question, judges? Yes. Hi, Vivan. How are you? I could I'm see. Some, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. Okay. So, Ayurveda and yoga for immunity. So, I could see some yoga poses yes. in your presentation. So, I would like to know how has yoga helped you in your life to bring out the best in you as a student? Ma'am, uh, during exams, as you know, uh, to like reduce stress, we think so much, will we get good marks or not? So yoga is effective in that way, like it reduces uh, stress and anxiety also. And breathing exercises also uh, uh, help in relaxing our mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, dear Vivan. And thank you, ma'am. And do you know, Bibi, in the herbal tea, I added organic sugar to sweeten it. So it was like an icing on the cake. Yes, Mary, very true. Nowadays, many people prefer organic products as it is good for a health. Now, I call upon Lakshman Sri Ram of Five Eye to present his symposium on the topic Organic Farming in India. Yes, ma'am. Can you see my screen? Ma'am, can you see my screen? Yes, we can hear. Okay, ma'am. Yes, we can see your screen. The slide that you see is from the movie 36 Plus. Most of you must have watched this movie. The character, the character Vasanti in the movie refines her home, greenhouse, and turns out to be successful in going organic. Is organic farming a new evolving concept that we Indians were not aware of? 
while modern farming methods help us to overcome the food crisis, why is there a need to organic farming? Good evening to everyone. I am Rakshman Sriram from Grade 5 Indian School, Alwadi Alitu. I would like to present answers for such questions through my presentation on organic farming in India. Continuous uses of pesticides and chemicals have a very negative effect on the quality of the soil. If we ignore the quality of the soil for the time being, these chemicals will enter into our water table and start contaminating water. They create health problems for both humans and animals. Do you think we can live a healthy life with this modern agriculture? No. Can you see alternate solution? Yes. The only solution is organic farming, which was used by ancient people. Now, we are going to see what is organic farming, its techniques, advantages, and disadvantages. What is organic farming? Organic farming in India is an agriculture process uses best control derived from organic manner and animal or plant species. Present status of organic farming in India. As of March 2020, 2.8 million of area under certified organic farming and 1.9 million registered and certified farmer. Did you know? Sikkim is the first state which is completely involved in this organic farming. India is the top spice producing country in the world. About 70 percentage spices are produced from India. There are some top organic food products which is produced in India. They are oil seeds, spices, cereals, pulses, coffee, tea, sugar, fruits and vegetables. Now let's see the techniques of organic farming. These are the techniques which is followed by our Indian farms. Soil management, wheat management, crop diversity, chemical management in farming, and biological pest control. Let's see one by one. First, soil management. Soil management is the primary technique of organic farming in India. After the cultivation, the soil loses its nutrition and its fertilizer goes down. In the process which the soil is recharging with all the necessary nutrition is called soil management. It is recharging with animal wastage like cow dung, cow urine, vegetable scraps, and even plant wastage like dried leaves and dried flowers. Next, weed management. Organic farming's main aim is to remove the weeds. Weeds are the unwanted plants sticking with the crop. There are two techniques which gives a solution to the weed. Moving or cutting. In this process, farmers cut it. Mulching. In this process, farmers use a plastic film or plant to residue the soil surface to block the weed growth. Next, crop diversity. According to this technique, different crops can cultivate together to meet the growing demand for crops. And this is the most famous organic farming technique in India. Next, Chemical management in farming. Nature of your chemicals like herbicides and pesticides are used to protect soil and crops. Proper maintenance is required throughout the area to control the other organisms. And the last one is biological pest control. Farmers use living organisms to control pests with or without the use of chemicals. Now let's see some advantages of organic farming. Maintenance and enhances ecological balance. It means it acts as a nutritious to the soil rather than harming it. Increasing demand. We are not using these pesticides and chemicals, so the demand for organic farm is increasing. Environment friendly. It does not cause any harm to our environment. In expensive process, we use organic inputs. Healthy and tasty food. Organically growing food has more nutrition value and boosts the immune system. Now let's see some disadvantages of organic farming. Lesser, yes, 
organic farming produces much less output than the modern agriculture farm. Higher prices. The prices are higher due to the higher demand. Shorter shelf life. It has a shorter shelf life due to the non usage of artificial preservatives. Difficult to make mass production. Farmers find it difficult to accommodate mass production. Due to the higher demand and higher prices in the market, the organic foods are not available to everyone. So to overcome this, we can do organic farming in a smaller way than our home garden. Is it possible? Yes, possible. Our daily needs fruits, vegetables, and herbs can be done by ourselves with simple organic farming methodology. We can do organic farming in our room, in open garden, or in terrace garden. Do you remember last year, class four, we learned about biodegradable wastage. Fruits and vegetable scraps will be collected in a container. This stored waste scrap, which can be broken down to harm a substance by nature in due course of time by the chain reaction of microorganisms, such as certain bacteria, which forms a spiny product as compost. Now, let's see how compost works. We eat fruits and vegetables from healthy plants, but some nutrition remain in the food scraps. Then, worms and microorganisms break down the food scraps into nutrition. The plants can use to grow from the compost. Here, we can see plants live in healthy soil. Fruits and vegetables absorb the nutrition from the healthy soil to grow. My practical implementation of organic farming. Enjoyed this session and let's join hands with the farmers to grow our needy vegetables and herbs in a daily use by using organic. Love your plants, love your planet, grow organic. Thank you. Any questions from judges' end? Yes, ma'am. Next man, how are you? Yes, ma'am, I'm fine. Okay. So in your presentation, you are just uh, telling us about uh, what you implement, right? Okay, is it sufficient enough to meet all the needs of your family members? As far as uh, we are trying to be organic. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear Lakshman. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, how I wish. I had a robot serving me one more cup of herbal tea as I'm too busy to prepare a cup for myself. The days aren't far away. When your wish will become true, Mary, it's going to be really interesting to see how society deals with artificial intelligence. But I'm sure it will definitely be cool. Very true, Vivi. Calling upon Ridda Fatima of 5H to deliver her presentation on artificial intelligence in schools. Thank you, ma'am. Is my screen visible? Yes, Ridda. Ma'am, is my screen yes. visible? Yes. Good evening, dear judges, and a wonderful evening to one and all. This is Judah Fatma from Class 5 H. Today, I'm here with my presentation on the topic, Artificial Intelligence in Schools. To start with, a quick comparison of human intelligence versus artificial intelligence. Human intelligence, as you all know, is natural, God-gifted, and enhances with its application. And so, humans are considered as the supreme creation of God. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, is man-made and thus 
induced by humans into the machines or robots. It is precise, accurate, and achievable on command. AI has already been applied to education, primarily in some tools that help develop skills and testing systems. Even in our country, India, AI can drive efficiency, personalization, and streamline admin tasks to allow teachers the time and freedom to provide understanding and adaptability, uniquely human capabilities, the machines would struggle. Applications involve A, differentiated and individualized learning. Adjusting learning based on an individual student's particular needs has been a priority for educators for years. But AI will allow a level of differentiation that's impossible for teachers who have to manage some 30 students in each class. The idea of customizing curriculum for every student's need is not viable today, but it will be for AI-powered machines. AI app catering to this feature is Freckle Education. Freckle Education is an app that fosters individualized learning by automatically creating lessons that fit each student's unique needs. B, universal access for all students. AI tools can help make global classrooms available to all, including those who speak different languages or those with special needs. Inclusive education in two sets. Real life implementation of this is brain power. Brain power are computerized classes that automatically coach people with autism and other brain related challenges. C, automate admin tasks. AI makes a phenomenal grading tool. The advancements in AI could allow teachers to hand off all such admin tasks to an AI so that teachers can spend more time with students individually. One of the popular apps for the same is Grade School which transforms grading for faculties. Features include reduces grading time, increases consistency, improves grader coordination, and pinpoints knowledge gaps. D, analytics. The many different learning and teaching styles don't always work cohesively. An AI teaching assistant would be able to adjust to these factors, ensuring students can receive the most effective teaching methods for their learning style. Apps such as Coursera use AI to identify areas the students are struggling. The ability to rapidly identify a student's weakness could prove to be one of the most significant benefits of AI in education. E, the most interesting and my favorite, immersive learning features. Immersive learning goes hand in hand with AI assisted education and virtual reality has already increased students' ability to become completely immersed in a lesson. Imagine being able to show the human body or the working cells of a plant with VR or my favorite friends from the past, dinosaurs. All said and done, we cannot deny the fact that computers or technology is merely an augmentation of a teacher. No matter how advanced or smart a computer program is, it cannot replace teachers because teaching is not all about facts and figures, but much more. Would like to express my view with the help of my favorite quote. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and instill a love of learning. Now, 
talking about the areas of concern the AI lacks. A, absence of human connection. B, lack of compassion and emotion of the teacher. C, requires a constant internet connectivity to work effectively. And indeed, expensive costs of implementations. Now, for a quick review of few of the pros and cons of AI. Pros like increased efficiency, reducing human risk, aid in decision making, availability, and many more. And on the other hand, we have the cons. Cause of unemployment, high initial investment, dependency on machines, lack of creativity, etc. I would conclude that although education might be a bit slower to the adoption of AI and machine learning, but the changes are beginning and will continue. By leveraging the best attributes of machines and teachers, the vision for AI in education is one. Will they work together for the best outcome for students? To put it in other words, our intelligence is what makes us human. And AI is an extension of that quality. Thank you. Your question, judges? Hi, Rida. Yes. So we have been successfully using many of the AI tools in our school. So I would like to know how far are they effective in bringing out success in students' life? Or how far, how much, how can it be effective in your life? As a student, AI tools, how does it help you? Yes. Ma'am, in education, firstly, when students, yes. to bring out the students in better, the students needs, uh, as the first point I told in my PPT, it was that differentiated and individualized learning. And as the question is, how can it help in the upcoming of children? In that, now sometimes students, there are a lot of students in a class, but there are half students, maybe they're slow learners, or maybe they're specially able kids. But a teacher, max to max, can give 20 or 30 minutes to a student because it has a goal to achieve like 40 minutes it has to teach in the class and that's why the children who are slow learners maybe somewhere they can't understand the concepts or maybe there are some things that they ask the teacher but still don't understand it but ai on the other hand if you have ai it can adjust learning for individual students education educational needs if a student needs is not understanding in the way the teacher is explaining, the AI can change the learning according to the student's needs and teach the student so that the, so that the student's concept is clear. Okay. Thank you, all the best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rida. Thank you, ma'am. Do you know, Bibi, the other day in Mumbai, I had to pay 150 rupees for a small cup of herbal tea. And the amazing part is they were not very comfortable with cash. Payment had to be done through Paytm or Google Pay. Yes, Mary, you are absolutely true. Status now is not whether you are awake or asleep. It is whether you are online or offline. Growing India is Digital India. Coming up next is Neil Bhamre of 5D to enlighten us on Digital India. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes, yes, Neil. You are. My screen is visible. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. 
A very good afternoon to one and all present here. My name is Neil Praveen Bhamre, studying in Class One, Section D. Today, I'm going to present on the topic Digital India. Before I start, let me ask him a question. I hope you all might have traveled by train in India. So, how do you guys get to know the current status of your train? Either you all keep on dialing 139 or you just simply download the app and check the location of the train in just a minute. I'm sure everyone will go for the second option. Yes, that's exactly what the topic is. Digital India. So, let's look at all about the visions of Digital India. Minimum government. Maximum Governance Digital India is an initiative by the government of India and is a part of PM Shri Narendra Modi's vision of making India a digitally empowered knowledge economy. It was launched on 1st July 2015 with the motto Power to Empower. The main vision of this project was to transform India into a digitally empowered society by improving the key areas of vision, which is called the Sutri program. The first core area of this vision is digital infrastructure as a utility to every citizen. Under this area, government has taken initiatives to provide high-speed internet, Digital unique identity in the form of Aadhaar card, mobile banking, e-banking, and secure cyberspace. The next core area is governance and service on demand. It includes seamless services across all government offices, use of various services via mobile apps, digital services such as e-commerce, and electronic transactions. The third and the last core area is digital empowerment of citizens, which government is working on digital literacy, access to all digital resources, digital services in Indian language, the submission of documents to all government portals. In order to reform the Indian governance, this project is planning to connect the entire country to internet connectivity. The government is focusing on nine pillars of growth areas. Let us look at these nine pillars one by one. The first pillar is broadband highways. Under this, 250,000 gram panchayats will be connected to high speed internet by national optic fiber network. The second pillar is Universal access to mobile connectivity, under which 42,300 villages which are not yet connected to internet will be provided internet connectivity. Now, let's move on to the third one. Public internet access. This aims to provide government services to all grand childs through common service centers. It also includes converting 150,000 post offices into multi-service centers. The fourth pillar is e-governance. It aims to simplify government business processes by the introduction of IT. One of the good examples for it is the filing of income tax returns. The fifth pillar is information for all. It aims to provide all the data online through social media and web portals. Now, let's move on to the sixth pillar. Electronic manufacturing. The aim was zero imports by 2020 to increase level of local manufacturing of electronic items and clarity on taxation, incentives and government procurement. The seventh pillar is early harvest program aims to convert cities into digital cities by providing public Wi-Fi hotspots and biometric attendance in all ministries. 
The eighth one is ID for jobs. The aim is to train students in small towns and villages for IT sector jobs. Setting up BPOs in each northeastern state. And the last pillar is Vikranti. This aims electronic delivery of services, be it education, agriculture, health, justice, or financial inclusion. The latest examples are e Shala, e healthcare, and use of apps like Aroke City. These were the nine pillars of Digital India. Now, let us look at some of the major impacts of this project. Job creation. It has helped to create direct and indirect jobs. Unified payment interfaces like GPay and Paytm. Key governance and e-services across all government offices. It has helped to improve the Indian economy. As we all know, challenges are part of our life. Let's look at some of the challenges for this project. Being the first kind of biggest program, it has called for various restructuring in ministries and also called for additional skill resource and knowledge base. Lack of infrastructure, land acquisition, and laying the fiber optic cable are some technical challenges. Interpersonal issues like technophobia, resistance to change, and limitation to learn new things are also important challenges. Now, before I conclude, I would like to share some of the recent developments in this project. On 27 September 2021, our Honorable PM has launched Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, as a part of which every Indian can get a digital health ID which will have all the health record of an individual and many more benefits. Finally, I would like to conclude my presentation with a request to all Indian citizens to please be a digital person to transform India into a digital India. Thank you all. One day, Mataram. Thank you, ma'am. Judges, Hi. you Hi. may Hi. ask Hi. your Hi. questions. Good evening, Neil. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. So you explained many things about digital India, right? Yeah, ma'am. So as a student, how you take the benefit of digital India? Ma'am, now, uh, like in this COVID situation, we are stuck at home. So we can't do many things. So Digital India is helping in that way. It has opened new apps like Ipatshala, Arogya Setu, Oven app, and many more apps. So we are getting that benefit of Digital India. And even Amazon, we can order e-commerce, right? It is an e-commerce. We can order things, saris, everything. So it is benefiting. Uh, it is a benefit for India and uh, every citizen in India. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, ma'am. Our country, India, is among the uppermost countries in the world in the field of scientific research. The science of today is the technology of tomorrow. Exactly, with this key point, here we have our next contestant, Safit Sarfraz of 5F, to present his findings on contribution of India to science and technology. Ma'am, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, ma'am. A very good afternoon, esteemed judges, respected teachers, and all my dear friends. I am Safin Sarfraz Wangli from Class 5F. My topic for today is India's contribution towards science and technology. India is a land where numerous brilliant brains have made contribution in the field of science and technology and enhanced its position around the globe. Science and technology play an important role in modern life. From exploration in space 
nuclear and domestic technology. The invention started to improve everyday lives. Independent India has taken confident strides on its road to scientific and technological development. India is amongst the top most countries in the world in the field of scientific research, positioned as one of the top five nations in space exploration. Let us now look at a few of the contributions a nation has made in the field of science and technology. Medical and health sciences. India today is well known in the world for its excellent medical facilities and depth of clinical expertise. Major advances have been made in this field in preventing and treating various diseases. A decrease in death rates is considered one of the major achievements that came India's way in this sector. India is also known as the pharmacy of the world. Indian companies are supplying affordable drugs and vaccines not only to developing countries but also to developed nations. India fights COVID-19. India has successfully manufactured two vaccines for COVID-19. The COVID shield manufactured by the Serum Institute of India and Covaxin manufactured by Bharat Biotech in association with the Indian Council of Medical Research and the National Institute of Virology. Friends, do you know what this slide represents? Yes, you guessed it right. It's about Israel the Indian Space Research Organization. And this is Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the father of the Indian Space Program. Space Technology. India's space program is making giant leaps to the moon, Mars, and beyond. India's trust with space began in 1960s. Vikram Sarabhai identified the role and importance of space technology in the nation's development. From explorations in space, nuclear, and diverse technology to inventions that have improved everyday life. From landing Aravata, the first experimental satellite in 1975, the Isro's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, the PSLV, which launched a record of 104 satellites in one go in the year 2017. The project Gaganyan, which is gearing up to send Indians to space in 2022 to mark the 75th year of India's independence. India's space technology has come a long way since its inception. India's BrahMos. India's BrahMos is a medium range ram with supersonic cruise missile. It has a supersonic speed of 2.8 Mach, which is almost 3,000 km per hour, making it extremely difficult for any fight jets to intercept and shoot down. It is the fastest supersonic cruise missile in the world. India's mission to Mars. The Mars orbital mission, commonly referred to as Mangalyan 1, is a space probe launched by the Indian Space Research Organization on November 5, 2013. India is the first Asian nation to reach the Mars orbit and the first in the world to achieve on its first attempt. Mangalyan is equipped with an instrument that will attempt to measure methane in the atmosphere. Some scientists see methane as a potential indicator of biological activity. Its presence on Mars may provide evidence that it was once capable of supporting life. The spirit of the nation's scientific community stayed undeterred, even as the COVID-19 pandemic continued to create havoc throughout the world. From making the country's first hydrogen fuel cell car, Developing a camera that requires no focus. Here is a list of accomplishments a scientist has clinched in the field of science and technology in the year 2020. India's first hydrogen fuel cell car. The technology uses chemical reactions between hydrogen and oxygen to generate electrical energy, eliminating the use of fossil fuels. Humanoid geometra. Geometra is a female humanoid, something that has an appearance resembling a human but is robotic. She has been built for ISRO's first unmanned Gaganyan mission. Geometra can monitor model parameters, alert astronauts, and perform life support operations. It will simulate the exact human function. 
camera that doesn't need to focus. A team that one in one scientist Rajesh Menon has developed a camera that requires no focus. The new lens eliminates the need of focusing and enables the camera to keep all objects in focus simultaneously. This advance could enable thinner smartphone cameras, improved and smaller cameras for biomedical imaging such as endoscopy and more compact cameras for automobiles. India's contribution to science and technology has given it real recognition all over the world. India today has become a rapidly emerging and developing country through new inventions in the field of science and technology. We as a nation are indebted to every Indian who has contributed in the field of science and technology. I am proud of them. We are all proud of them. Proud to be an Indian. Jai Hind! With this, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Thank you. Any questions from judges and? Yes. Hi, Safi. Good. Yes, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Yeah. So can you cite any of the contributions made by ancient scientists or sentient Indians, I mean? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the inventions or the scientists? Any contributions made by Indians? Oh. Ma'am, medical and health sciences helps okay, in what treating uh, yes. in treating uh, various diseases and um, internet connection has also enabled us uh, he, uh, it has helped us um, during the COVID-19 pandemic and in our online classes. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Safin. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear students, for those exemplary performances. Sometimes... A short walk down memory lane is all it takes to appreciate where you are today. Here we present a video, Walk Down Memory.
Fatima, a proud ass duplicate of grade 6. When I was informed about the India 75 Symposium being organized for the students of grade 5, I was really excited. Final year Nice Duplicate Primary was a bit unique experience. As you all know, the pandemic has forced all of us to study from home. Of course, it's not something that we planned. It just happened and we need to adjust. In the beginning, I thought it is going to create serious interruption in academic activities. But our school was able to adjust quickly to the situation and credit goes to our skilled technical team as well as our amazing teachers. India participated in the academic symposium event arranged by ISTF. We were a group of three students and fully supported by the EVIS department. My sincere thank you to the EVIS department and to all the teachers for making the EVIS subject so interesting and one of my favorite subjects. Engineering, the art and math are similar fields of study in that they all involve creative processes and time uses just one method for inquiry and investigation. The initial disciplines of STEM were brought together to prepare students for the growing needs of a global workforce that was beginning. I was one of the participants for the academic symposium organized for the fabulous event Indian School Talent Fest in 2020. It was a unique experience. We were a team of three and we presented on STEAM education. Despite the pandemic situation, facilitators from the department of EVS supported and mentored us immensely which enabled us to obtain an A+. As students, we needed additional exposures to build our confidence and strengthen our learning experiences. Greetings everyone. I am Anikya Narayan. In the previous year, I was at the Academic Symposium. It is a magnificent learning opportunity. It gives you a platform to explore new areas. Last year, our topic was STEAM education. We learned that education is not learning of facts, but training the mind to think. STEAM uses art as a lever to explosive growth, social and emotional connections, and the foundation of innovators of tomorrow and today. Don't be afraid of the topics, because our teachers are here to guide and support us. Our topic was also rated as one of the best. So, I request you all to take part in this wonderful event. All the best. I sincerely recommend and encourage my juniors to make the best use of the opportunities provided by ISWK and actively participate and give in your best for the India 75 Symposium. Best wishes to all of you. Hello everyone, I am Riddish in XISWK and currently studying in the school in India. It gives me immense pleasure to be sharing my experiences in ISWK primary. As Albert Einstein had once said, Education is not about the learning of the facts. It is about the training of the mind to think. I can certainly say that ISWK firmly believes in this. The enrichment activities and the quiz programs organized by the Department of EDS helped my mind to think better. Various platforms were provided so that I could enhance my skills. I was one of the second prize winners in the Cyber Brainathon Season 2, an inter-school science and technology quiz organized by the Department of EDS. I'm truly grateful to all the EVS teachers who went out of the way to train us for the quiz. Thank you so much, teachers. Today, I'm extremely happy to know about the India at 75 Symposium. 
organized for grade 5 students by the department of EDS. I am very confident that it will be a great learning experience, not only for the finalists, but also for the audience. I wish you all the very best. I will be watching it live to cheer you on. Happiness of today is a memory for tomorrow. Things end, but memories last. Let's move on to the next segment of today's event. The health of soil, plant, animal, and man is one and indivisible. That really makes sense. I now call upon the sixth contestant, Sandria Reen of 5E, to enrich us about organic farming in India. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes. Can you see my screen, ma'am? Yes, very much. Can I start, ma'am? Yes, please go ahead. How can we make sure that the fresh fruits and vegetables we buy are any fresh? When you go to the supermarket to buy fruits and vegetables, you might have seen a section for organic produce. Which type of vegetables and fruits do you select? Organic or conventional? Let's think it out. After checking the price of the organic produce, obviously, we will buy the regular conventional fruits and vegetables. Why is it so? Did you ever think our farmers make these organic foods and why is it costly? Let's check it out. Good day to all of you. I am Sandra Reem Prashant of Class 5E presenting Organic Farming in India. Let's look at the contents of today's discussion. Brief history, what is organic farming? Principles, components, reasons to promote organic farming, sales of organic farming, popular organic brands, and finally, implementing organic farming at an individual level. That is a surprise at the end. Okay, take a look around the brief history. Do you agree that cultivators of the earth are the most valuable citizens? Yes, of course, we have to agree with that. Because agriculture started along with human civilization, but it was totally dependent on nature. Let's watch this video, which clearly depicts that green revolution results in the depletion of fertility or soil because of rapid use of chemicals. Hence, we are to move towards sustainable agricultural methods. Organic farming is a solution for this, even though it is an old agricultural practice. Now let's look at the definition of organic farming. Organic farming is a sustainable farming method of raising crops in such a way that the soil is kept alive and in good health by the use of organic waste. Let's look at the principles of organic farming. There are four main principles. Principles of health, ecology, fairness, and care. Now keep an eye on the fourth content that is the components of organic farming. The first component is crop rotation. Growing crops on sequential rotation in the same field helps to replenish the soil with nitrogen. Then biological management using biopesticides and natural enemies. Animal husbandry, biofertilizers, manures, vermicomposting, and green manures. In this picture, we can see the agriculture system that works in harmony with nature. We can grow animals and animal waste can be used as manures. We can also follow crop rotation and intercropping system. Now let's look at the reasons to promote organic farming. Eco-friendly, healthy and nutritional food, free from GMOs, and well-balanced soil and its conservation. At the same time, 
reduce unsustainable modern farming methods and save the environment. Because deep flowing and nitrate runoff with rainwaters contaminates water bodies. Then poisonous chemical sprays also kills useful insects and monoculture leads to loss of biodiversity. Now let's look at the steps to start organic farming on a large scale in India. Step one, get organic certification, which is the most important step in starting your organic farming. Step two, select suitable crop. And step three, marketing. When you register, you'll get PGS India Green Certificate. And after three years, you'll get PGS India Organic Certificate. This is the symbol of the India Organic Certificate for exporting the organic products. Let's look at the status of organic farming in India. India introduced the organic farming policy in 2005. Approximately 2.78 million hectare area is used for organic cultivation. Madhya Pradesh is the largest producer of organic products with 0.76 million hectares of area along with Rajasthan and Maharashtra. Around 150 million farmers are directly connected with the farming sector. The world's first fully organic state is Sikkim and other two states are Tripura and Uttarakhand. Studies showed that the states which are given in blue color are the best places suitable for organic farming because the soil is rich in organic carbon. These are some of the popular organic brands of India. And also here are some of the certified organic online stores and web addresses. Let's look at the case study. Ugil is a natural farmer society in Tamil Nadu, having 64 members undertaking organic farming and the marketing of the organic products. These are some of the exported organic produce from India to mass supermarkets. According to IFAD, India has more than 15,000 certified organic farms. Let's look at the reason why organic products are expensive. Because complex certification process, high production cost because of more labor input and net to get infrastructure. Now we are moving to the last segment of the content, implementing organic farming at an individual level. As the population of the planet is increasing at an alarming rate, and providing food for the world has become extremely difficult. So sustainable organic farming is a need of the hour. We used to buy vegetables and fruits on the market, but we are not sure about the types of chemicals used in it. Then why do you think about growing at least one vegetable or plant at your house if you have a small balcony? These are the plants we are growing at home in my small organic garden. I also make biofertilizers. You can also make biofertilizers if you have a small bucket or pot at your house. If you do not have a balcony, no worries. You can grow microgreens on cotton cloth or tissue paper. These are the plants we are growing back home in India. As children, we can always help and influence our friends and families in organic farming, even if we are in a month. Let me conclude. Our diet is a bank account. Good food choices are good investments. Enjoy the fruits and vegetables of your labor. Thus, along with the celebration of Azadi Ka Amrit no Hoster, let's take a decision to grow at least one plant in your house and thus contribute in organic farming. Thank you. Yes, you may ask your questions. Good evening, Sandria. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Fine, ma'am. Okay. You said about very good value points about organic farming. Can you just tell me what are the limitations or challenges sometimes we may face by this organic farming? You yourself have done that, right? Any challenges you have faced? Challenges, ma'am, I think. Or in general? Any limitations will be there? 
Ma'am, I think. Anything comes to your mind. I'm sorry, ma'am, I will refer it. No problem. Thank you, Sandria. Thank you, ma'am. With absolute conviction that organic farming delivers the highest quality, best tasting food produced without artificial chemicals or genetic modification and with respect for animal welfare and the environment while helping to maintain the landscape and rural communities. Here comes Janelle of 5J to deliver her presentation on organic farming in India. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, is my screen visible? Janelle, could you please run it in slideshow? Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Dear judges and friends, I had to come urgently to India and our house is near the road and I'm sitting in a quiet corner of the house. But if you hear some sounds of traffic in the background, I'm very sorry about it. Please excuse me for that. May I start now, ma'am? Yes, Janine. Okay, ma'am. Hello, everyone. My name is Janelle Kumar from Class 5J. Luxury for the rich. Organic farming may turn out to be a necessity, not just for the poor, but for everyone. And I come from a land where people believe that agriculture is our culture. It gives me immense pleasure to present about the topic, organic farming in India. Hey, who are these guys? Do you know them? Of course, they're the Croods and the story of farming begins with them. People like the Croods lived thousands of years ago and were called early men. Early men were hunter gatherers. They would hunt animals or gather fruits and vegetables from plants and trees. When the animals moved away, he would move as well. But then he discovered farming and grew his own food. This happened more than 10,000 years ago. Organic farming was practiced in India since thousands of years using organic techniques where the fertilizers and pesticides were obtained from plant and animal products. Since then, the population began to increase and more food was needed. After independence, India witnessed a severe food crisis. So people began to use science to find new ways to produce more food. The Green Revolution of 1970s changed the situation, making India from being a food importer to becoming a food exporter by 1990. Under the leadership of former Prime Minister Mrs. Indira Gandhi, India increased its production of food grains, especially in areas like Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. The main aspects of the Green Revolution in India were high yielding varieties of seeds, mechanization of agriculture using tractors and other such equipments, use of chemical fertilizers and pesticide, and modern methods of irrigation. While this increased our food production, it had many negative impacts as well, like loss of soil fertility, erosion of soil, soil toxicity, diminishing of water resources, pollution of underground water, and global warming. Agriculture was a disaster for the farmers, for the consumers, for the farm workers, and the biggest disaster for the environment and for our future generations. We need to feed the world, but we must bring back the ecological health of our planet. And to do this, we need organic farming. 
that completely changes the way we grow our food. Organic farming is the production of crops and livestock without use of synthetic chemicals or non-organic fertilizers. The four principles of organic farming are health of consumers or people, fairness in the way of doing business, focus on ecology and care in every step of production of organic foods. Together, all these provide a vision of agriculture that inspires an environment-friendly way to cultivate and produce food for the whole world. The main methods of organic farming include crop rotation, green manures and compost, biological pest control and mechanical cultivation. Crop rotation allows us to grow different crops on the same piece of land, one after the other. This prevents the soil from losing its fertility. Green manures and compost involves making natural pesticides fertilizers using cow dung, cow urine and jaggery and other ingredients. Biological pest control using natural pesticides like neem paste. Now, let us see how India's position in the field of organic farming. India along with the rest of the Asia con continent holds 8% in the global share of organic farming. According to the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movement, India holds the ninth rank with Australia on the top. But it is to be noted that India ranks first in the number of organic farmers. Sikkim, a northeastern state of India, became the first state in the world to become fully organic. Isn't that amazing? The government of India has announced many schemes to support organic farming. Mission Organic Value Chain Development or for Northeast Region and Parampara Gat Krishi Vikas Yojana introduced in 2015 are two such examples. Due to India's Agri-Export Policy 2018, India emerged as a major player in global organic markets. India exports flax seeds, sesame, soybean, tea, medicinal plants, rice, and pulses. Here you can see some of the popular organic brands of India. There are many advantages of organic farming, like not using chemicals in the food grown that results in better health of the soil, the environment, the farmers, and the consume. There are also some disadvantages, mainly due to the cost of growing and selling organic food. But as you can see, the advantages are far more than the disadvantages. In a world battered by the COVID pandemic, the demand for organic farming is increasing not only in India, but also globally. Nowadays, not just farmers, but even ordinary people also grow organic food in their gardens. So as a business opportunity, there is a great scope for organic farming in India. And that's why Raj Patel, the award-winning author, economist and activist, said that far from being luxury for the rich, organic city not just for the poor, but for everyone. So it's time to go organic. These are some reference. I thank everyone for the opportunity given to me. Jai Hind. Your question, judges. Hi, Jenny. Hi, ma'am. As you mentioned in your presentation, Green Revolution helped our country to overcome the food crisis. So why should we go back to organic farming? I need your opinion. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, my opinion is that organic farming really helps because it's so natural. It's not having any chemicals. It doesn't make us sick. And um, also it reduces the risk for farmers who uses it. 
and it's really helpful for the world to become fully organic and i feel like that will help in the future as well thank you all the best thank you so much ma'am god bless you too thank you janil thank you ma'am if we teach today as we were taught yesterday we rob our children of tomorrow we need technology in every classroom and in every student and teachers hand because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world dhruv rishikesh of 5b comes up next to guide how artificial intelligence can be used in schools this is okay good evening vice principals teachers audience and my dear friends i andro brishikesh from class 5b and today i am going to present the topic i am going to present the topic ai in schools firstly i have a challenge for you my dear friends this is a 10 second challenge you will have to try and have to read some text that i give on the screen this text will be very jumbled so do so please try and take your time in 3 2 1 Dear friends, time's up. Now I'm sure that none of us could even read one single word. This is what dyslexic students see when they are trying to read a normal text. I'm sure that we all are now intrigued in the topic dyslexia. Let's understand what is dyslexia. Dyslexia is a specific form of learning disability in which a person cannot read, write, or spell properly. Unlike other learning disabilities, dyslexia does not affect the IQ level of a person. Teachers usually identify students with dyslexia when they show symptoms such as. reading well below the expected level for their age difficulty understanding what is just read or heard problem seeing relationships between letters and words now let's see the dyslexia rate in india according to kulkarni and others in 2011 dyslexia rate in india has increased exponentially in the past 10 years 35 million students in this in student in india are dyslexic this is a huge problem but there's always a solution if we can identify it and the solution to this problem is ai today in my presentation we will explore the possibilities of ai and how it can help students with dyslexia ai can help in early diagnosis of dyslexia teaching reading and helping writing let's move on to the first two that is lexplore lexplore was created by karolinska institute in sweden It was created in 2016 in Sweden and later migrated to USA in 2017. Lexplore uses AI to diagnose dyslexia and identify children's reading and writing difficulties. Let's see a video to understand Lexplore even more. As you can see here, there are many circles. 
These circles represent how much time the reader has spent on the word. The bigger the circle, the more time the reader has spent on the word. The lines indicate the eye movement of the reader. And hence it proves that we can, we can treat dyslexia with Lexplorer. Let's move on to the second tool, that is Azure Immersive Reader. Microsoft's Immersive Reader has features such as improved readability, highlights parts of speech, displays pictures for common words, reads content aloud, converts speech to text, and splits words into syllables. Now let's see a success story from Mark. This is Mark. He is a normal kid, just like all of us. And he's my friend. But he is dyslexic and cannot read or write properly. Now let's find out how Microsoft's Immersive Reader has helped Mark cheat dyslexia. As you can see here, Mark is reading perfectly fine with Microsoft's speech to text option. And he's able to do our everyday things with Microsoft's many other offer, and many other options. He's living his life to the fullest potential now. Let's see my proposed solution in a nutshell. Azure Immersive Reader combined with Lexplore can bring wonders to the lives of students with dyslexia, especially in India. Now let's discuss the implementation cost. It costs 60 rupees per student per year for Lexplore, and Azure Immersive Reader comes free with Microsoft 365 and can be bought separately per student per year for 95 rupees. That means for a whopping 775 rupees per student per year, it will cost. Now let's see the benefits. It empowers the teachers and empowers the youth of all abilities and disabilities. AI helps to achieve our prime minister's vision of self-reliant India. In conclusion, education is universal human right. It is estimated that one in three school children have learning disabilities, lack of specialized teachers, a major barrier to refuge such students. I hope my school, my country will help to cheat the education system for dyslexic students so that we can eliminate the disparities and inequalities with my proposed solution. These are the references which I've used in my presentation. You may take a screenshot of them. If you have any queries or you want to know more about me, visit www.itsdrops.com. I repeat, www.itsdrops.com. Dear friends, I'm waiting. Now it's time for the Q&A session. Over to the judges for the Q&A. Thank you. No question, judges. Good evening, Dhruv. Good evening, ma'am. Okay. So, in your opinion, what will be the role of teacher with the use of such AI tool? The use of such AI tool can help students treat dyslexia so that everyone gets a fair chance in the education system then the teachers have to help the students understand how the software works and how they can cheat dyslexia and what an opportunity it is. Okay. Thank you, Dhruv. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dhruv. Thank you, ma'am. Technology will never replace great teachers, but in the hands of great teachers, it's transformational. Without an iota of doubt, I can say 
education at Indian school Wadi Kabir is transformational. Albert Einstein once quoted, we owe a lot to the ancient Indians teaching us how to count, without which most modern scientific discoveries would have been impossible. Lakshmi of 5C coming up next to proudly declare the significant contributions of India to science and technology. Thank you, ma'am. What is the first sound that you hear in the morning? Most probably, it must be the ringing of an alarm clock. And at night, we switch on the lights before we go to bed. In between, what are the other commodities and luxuries that we use in our daily life to make our life comfortable? We use electronic devices for cooking, different means of transport for traveling, mobile phones for communication, etc. You can see all these luxuries are the resultant of science and technology. In each and every aspect of our life, we can see the use of scientific and technological knowledge. So, aren't you curious to know the contribution of our country, India, to science and technology? Honorable judges, teachers, and my dear friends, I am Lakshmi Vinod Nair, and today I am going to present Contribution of India to Science and Technology. Scientific and technological development holds the key to the progress of the development of any nation. India is one of the leading nations in the world in terms of science and technology. We can divide India's contribution mainly into three parts. Ancient Indians contributions, contributions prior to independence, post-independence contributions. The famous scientist Albert Einstein once said, we owe a lot to ancient Indians teaching us how to count without which most modern discoveries would have been impossible. Let us take a look upon some contributions of ancient Indians to science and technology. The idea of zero, the famous mathematician Aryabhata was the first person to create a symbol for zero, which is one of the most important inventions of our time. Plastic surgery, Sushita Samhita, written by Sushita, is considered to be one of the most comprehensive textbooks on ancient surgery. Astronomy, Aryabhata, the famous mathematician, astronomer whose book Aryabhatiya represented the pinnacle of astronomical knowledge. Later, in 19th and 20th century, prior to independence, many famous scientists were born in India, contributed to scientific and technological development. Here are some few contributions among them. Sir C. V. Raman won the Nobel Prize in 1930 for his discovery Raman effect, the light scattering theory. J.C. Bose proved that plants also have life. He was a multi-talented scientist who also invented wireless communication. Kwame J. Baba, mostly known as the chief architect of Indian nuclear program, had established two great research institutions, namely Baba Atomic Research Center, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. After independence, there's a dramatic development in the field of Indian science and technology, especially in space science, agriculture, and healthcare sector. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai initiated space research and helped develop nuclear power in India. He established in COSPER, which was later renamed as Indian Space Research Organization. Later, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam became the head of ISRO. Dr. Kalam developed Agni and Prithvi missiles. 
Under their leadership, India has built satellites at PSLV. India also sent probes to Moon and Mars, which includes Aryabhata, Chandrayaan, and Mangalyaan. Apart from India's own satellites, India has launched 328 satellites from 33 different countries till date. India is among the top most countries in the world in the field of scientific research and space exploration. Technology has brought a revolution in the field of agriculture. Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, the father of green revolution, developed high yield varieties of grains and India became self-sufficient in food grain production. India's agrarian culture and varied regional climate, along with modern technology, have significantly contributed to the global food basket. India exports varieties of rice, wheat, pulses, spices, fruits, and vegetables to various countries. Dr. Vargas Kurian, the father of white revolution, has enabled India to become the largest milk producer in the world. Now, in healthcare sector, India is known as the pharmacy of the world. Do you know? India is contributing 60% to the global vaccine supply to fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Apart from this, technology has made changes in education sector, IT field, rural development, etc. If we think globally, India ranks third in scientific and technical manpower, third in number of scientific publications, fifth in overall activities of space research organization. India's contribution to science and technology always makes us feel proud to be Indians. Jai Hind! Your question, judges. Hi, Lakshmi. Hi, ma'am. Among the three groups, as you said, ancient, pre-independence, and prior to independence, and after independence. So which among these contributions impressed you the most or inspired you? Ma'am, after independence. Okay, you can mention that. Which contribution? Uh, Ma'am, like, um, ma'am, uh, after independence, there was a... Uh, uh, in in space exploration, in that uh, Dr. P. J. Abdul Kalam and all other scientists together uh, has sent uh, have sent many satellites to space, and it helps ha us to attend online classes. And there is a satellite called EduSat, which helps us to attend online classes. And ma'am, uh, in this and in that uh, in agriculture that uh, we. Uh, are making uh, the agriculture more um, uh, more uh, technological. Like we use seed drill to put seeds instead of putting with hand, and we use a tractor instead of the oxes and bull we used before. So there are many uh, more uh, technology which has been improved in the future. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Okay, yes. Ancient India was a land of sages and seers, as well as a land of scholars and scientists. Research has shown that from making the best steel in the world to teaching the world to come, India was actively contributing to the field of science and technology centuries long before modern laboratories were set up. Many theories and techniques discovered by the ancient Indians have created and strengthened the fundamentals of modern science and technology. Here comes the final contestant of today's event, 
आहासी दे और फाइव ए टू थ्रो मोर लाइट ऑन द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया टू साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी Albert Einstein once said, "We owe a lot to ancient Indians, teaching us how to count. Without which, most of the modern scientific discoveries would have been impossible." Good afternoon, respected teachers and my dear friends. Today, I, Aharshi, am going to present about India's contribution towards science and technology. India has contributed many things to the world. India has a rich heritage and is home to many great scientists. India has a huge contribution to the world in the fields of science and technology. Now let us see what we have in today's content. Ancient India. Then we follow with modern India. Computer languages made by India and finally Indian contributors. Now let's see what India contributed in the ancient times. India has been contributing to the fields of science and technology since the ancient times. India's contribution to science and technology are natural air conditioning, complex stone work and construction engineering. Now let us see some more ancient inventions. Snakes and ladders. The game of snakes and ladders was created by the 13th century poet saint gandhi it was originally called moksha but the ladders in the game represented virtues and the snakes indicated vices ayurveda ayurveda is probably the earliest medical systems having a positive concept of health to be achieved through the blending of mental social moral and spiritual welfare here i have one ayurvedic medicine farming techniques and fertilizer india's farming technology was mostly indigenously developed and was ahead of its time it included soil testing techniques application of eco friendly pesticides and fertilizers etc shampoo It was invented in 1762 in the eastern parts of the Mughal Empire and used it as a head massage comprising of natural oil and herbs. The English word shampoo derives its name from the Hindi word shampoo which comes from the Sanskrit word chapayati meaning massage or knead. Mathematics. Brahmagupta was the first mathematician to treat zero as a number. and showed its mathematical operation arithmetic was discovered by the indians about 2nd century bc bhaskaracharya's book lilavati is regarded as the first book on modern arithmetic decimal system were developed in india in 100 bc now let me brief you about some modern contributions india has witnessed considerable growth in the fields of science and technology post independence india has the third largest scientific and technical manpower in the world now let us see some modern inventions space did you know isro is the sixth largest space research organization in the world india's first satellite aryabhatta was built by isro in 1975 India becomes the first country to reach Mars orbit. Nuclear energy. The main objective of India's nuclear energy program is to use it to generate power and apply the technology for further progress in medicine, industry, research, etc. As of November 2020, India has 23 nuclear reactors in operation and seven nuclear power plants with a total installed capacity of 7480 megawatts India is today recognized as one of the most advanced countries in nuclear technology USV Ajay Bhatt 
an Indian American computer architect made the USB a little removable storage device that is capable of holding large chunks of data storage and transfer plus it's easy to carry and use crescograph crescograph is a device used for measuring growth in plants it was created in 20th century by sir jagdish chandra bose the bose crescograph uses a series of clockwork gear and smoked glass plate to record the tip of the plant or its roots now let us see some computer languages made by india kojo kojo programming language is an integrated development environment ide for the computer programming and learning it was created and actively developed by lalit pant an indian american computer architect living in dehradun india julia Julia programming language is quite popular nowadays among data science professionals but a very few people know that it was co-created by an Indian scientist Viral Shah Now let us see some great inventions India's contributors has given to the world Do, do you know today India has given the cheapest satellite to the world India space program was developed by Vikram Sarabhai C. V. Raman contributed in the fields of physics and came up with the discovery of Raman effect. Indian scientist Viswesavaraya gave the world automatic sluice gates and block irrigation system. His birthday, 15th September, is celebrated as Engineers Day. Srinivasa Ramanujan, though died young, contributed to mathematical analysis, infinite series, number theory, and continued fractions. the essence of the scientific spirit is to realize what a wonderful world it is that we live in quoted by c v raman now let us recap the things we learned in today's ppt presentation so india has been contributing chess julia pi zero shampoo ruler usb etc Thank you for giving your precious time. Over to your judges and ma'ams. Good evening, Aharsi. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Fine, ma'am. How are you? I'm also fine. Thank you. Is it a good experience for you, right? Yes, ma'am. For sure. So we all have uh, some role, role models in our life, right? So yes. who is your role model in the field of science and technology? And in few sentences, you can say why. And my uh, role model is APJ Abdul Kalam because first of all, um, he joined the ISRO also means he was a part of ISRO. And I have seen a movie on him. It's like an animation movie. In that, I saw his hard work and all his pleasures, means what all he did for India. And also, he is the president of India. So, that's why I want to become like IAPJ Abdul Kalam. Okay. Very good. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Aharsi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear students, for those enriching and enlightening performances. The ballot is stronger than the bullet. Here comes one of the most exciting part of the show. Time to vote for your favorite contestant. Go to www.menti.com and enter the code 4052 it is displayed on the screen and vote for your favorite contestant. Choose your favorite contestant and do not forget to scroll down and click on the submit button. I repeat, 
Do, do not forget to scroll down and click on the submit button. I repeat the code number 4052055. One, four. Please note, you will be able to vote only once from a device for your favorite contestant. The code will be active for the next five minutes. So what are you waiting for audience? Get, set, go. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsam is an initiative of the government of India to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of independence of progressive India and the glorious history of its people, culture and achievements. The effort of our honorable prime minister is commendable. His vision of making this Mahotsam a nationwide festival is really praiseworthy. The aim of this Mahotsam is that every Indian citizen should know about the untold stories of the freedom struggle. Coming up for you is a short video on Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsam celebrating the 75th year of independence. भारत के पास तो गर्व करने के लिए अथा भंडार है समृद्ध इतिहास है चेतना में सांस्कृतिक विरासत है इसलिए आजादी के 75 साल का यह अवसर एक अमृत की तरह वर्तमान पीढ़ी को प्राप्त होगा कि आजादी के 75 साल का उसर कितना ऐतिहासिक है, कितना गौरवशाली है। इस पर्व में शास्वत भारत की परंपरा भी है, स्वाधीनता संग्राम की परछाई भी है, और आजाद भारत के गौरवान्वित करने वाली प्रगति भी है। आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव यानी आजादी की ऊर्जा का अमृत आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव यानी स्वाधीनता सेनानियों से प्रेरणाओं का अमृत आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव यानी नए विचारों का अमृत नए संकल्पों का अमृत आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव यानी आत्मनिर्भरता का अमृत और इसलिए ये महोत्सव राष्ट्र के जागरण का महोत्सव है ये महोत्सव सुराज के सपने को पूरा करने का महोत्सव है ये महोत्सव वैश्विक शांति का विकास का महोत्सव है फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल आइडियाज एट 75 Achievements at 75, actions at 75, or resolves at 75.
तक धूम 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 कट तक था दाकट तक धूम कट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक धूम ना दाकट तक धूम धूम कट तक दाकट तक धूम कट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक धूम 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 कट तक था दाकट तक धूम कट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक धूम ना दाकट तक धूम धूम कट तक दाकट तक धूम कट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक धूम 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 कट तक था दाकट तक धूम कट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक था दाकट तक दाकट तक धूम ना दाकट तक धूम was a wonderful compilation of events post independence of india dear ma'am dear sir our children are really doing well it's a tough competition can you share your feedback of the event in reference to our student Shashi ma'am Yes I'm here very much all ears and all eyes because truly it was a very very interesting as well as engrossing session I must say that the confidence of our young speakers was simply amazing to see that you were fluent in the way you presented your ideas it was really i mean i was really enjoying it and i felt extremely happy to kudos to all of you children very very well done uh, and i must say the preparedness on your part for uh, the session basically uh, researching on the topics that you wanted to present compiling all the information that you could put together and most importantly presenting it in such a confident manner was eye catching and really very very heartening i feel extremely pleased and happy to see that my students have done so very very well i think if i was there in your shoes i may not have been able to do it so confidently you were too good too good very proud of you excellent it was really nice a very informative session and i learned got to learn a lot too and i'm sure you have also gained irrespective of who the person would be who the student would be announced as the winner i feel that every one of you have done exceptionally well i think i'm going on repeating myself by saying very well done but i just can't help but say it it's truly very very impressive so very well done children all my love my blessings and i'm sure you will all bloom and of course to my wonderful hard working and committed team it's a salute because it's not so very easy to put a program of such magnitude you know to go ahead seamlessly without any stops without any pauses and without any hitches so to you ambika 
the, as the co coordinator of the department of EVS and to all the team over here, to all my teachers, a wonderful session. Hats off to you for your hard work, your dedication and your commitment. And of course, I need to conclude by giving you a special clap. Very, very well done. And my heartiest Thank congratulations you, to all my students and to all my teachers. Very well done. Super. Thank you, ma'am. And it's, I think, now over to Sean, sir. Thank you, Shashi, ma'am. You've taken the words out of my mouth. I think if I'm going to say anything, I'm going to be repeating what you just said. Anyway, let me try and put it in a nutshell as far as possible. Um, from the very moment their names were announced and the participants stepped forward, I could see an outstanding presentation of content and knowledge that had gone into that PPT. Next, um, the persona of each individual coming out with her own or his own style and speaking with confidence was some, something that literally picked me off my feet because that is something of a class five student at this age I didn't expect. Believe me, I've seen it for the first time and their preparation has been par excellence. Absolutely astounding. I mean, commendable, commendable. At the start of the show, and I clearly told the participants and all of you, we are all participating. And when we participate in competitions, obviously there's something we all take away. Now, believe me, I'm taking away probably more than what they're going to be taking away. <laughs> From the start, each topic, each participant that came out and spoke, I mean, had me glued to the screen. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, completely. Thoroughly enjoyed it. So my heartfelt congratulations to all the participants, because in my view, they're all winners. They all put in the same effort. They all performed, like I said, par excellence. It all depends on basically to the last count when it comes to basically the votes as to who is going to eventually be the winner. We've seen it in, in various competitions and programs on TV, and we're trying it out here as well on uh, India at 75 so Symposium with the EVS department. A brilliant idea and uh, fabulous. I would take this opportunity again, Shashima mentioned it and I will say it again, to congratulate the CVS department for putting up an outstanding you know, competition and an outstanding program. Really, really, it has touched me and I'm filled with so much of pride and happiness that it's just overflowing, you know? And uh, to the judges particularly, the judges listened, I'm surely very intently to see what each participant had to say and the questions that were put forward to them were so well thought of so that they could come out and speak and uh, come up with something of their age level, you know. And uh, they did well, they did well, except for maybe one or two, definitely as of these students haven't lost anything. They're going to be leaving with a lot of, you know, experience and what they've learned. We have to make mistakes to learn to do better next time. But all said and done, absolutely perfect, smooth, Shashima used the word seamless, I don't think this uh, uh, performance and program could have been any better. So congratulations to everybody and to the EVS department. Kiros to you. It's a salute. Definitely, it's a salute. Congratulations to all. Let us see. May the best contestant win. Thank you, Shashi. 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 Thank Thank you for your words of appreciation. Now, over to Ms. Bibi. Thank you, ma'am. Let's move on to the next segment of today's event. I'm sure you all must have thoroughly enjoyed the informative, mind-blowing presentations. We had a great competition today. Juries have submitted their judgments. Now, 
everyone's heart beats so fast and all participants must be excited about the results it's now time to declare the most awaited results First, let us see who is the winner for the special category, Weaver's Favorite Contestant. I now invite our judge, Ms. Nina Alex, to announce both the Weaver's Favorite Contestant and the winners of the third position of the Ireka India at 75 Symposium. So we have, thank you ma'am, we have our viewers favorite contestant. So here comes the viewers favorite contestant Neil Bhamre and the mentor is Miss Sudha. Congratulations. Congratulations, Neil. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, please announce the second, third position winner also. Yes. So here, the third position goes to Janil Kumar. And the mentor is Ms. Ambika Padmanabhan. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations, Janelle. Thank you, ma'am. Thank ma you, ma'am. Congratulations to the winner, winners and their mentors. The excitement is mounting. We now move on to the next winners to announce the winners at the second and the first position of the Eureka India at 75 Symposium. I now request our judge, Ms. Suma Senu, to do the honors. Thank you, ma'am. And the second position goes to Dhruv and mentor, Nerima. Congratulations, Guru, and congratulations, Merima. Congratulations, Dhruv. Well done. Ma'am, can you please announce the first winner? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Okay, here comes our winner for this today's competition, Neil Bamre. Congrats, dear, and the mentor, Sudhama. Thank you. And congratulations you, once again to all students. Congratulations, Neil. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Neil. Congratulations to all the winners and their mentors. Very well done champions. I would like to mention that the Beaver's choice and the final result have matched. Neil is indeed a justified winner. A big round of applause to all the winners. Congratulations. Other participants too. Please don't get discouraged as there will be many more opportunities for you in the future. Winning and losing.
winning and losing is the part of the game the most important thing is that you took the challenge and dare to face such fierce competition so i would say everyone is a winner here let's let us give a big round of applause to all participants believe in yourself and excel your own way good luck to all of you enjoy your eureka moment the most beautiful way to end the day is with a grateful heart i now call upon the sports coordinator of the indian school alwadi al kabir primary section master ayush shetty to deliver the vote of thanks Greetings to everyone. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks for Eureka India Charity Bar Symposium, the first one of its kind. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty for making sure today's event a resounding success. First and foremost, I would like to thank our principal, Mr. D N Rao, who, despite of busy schedule, found time to grace this occasion. I also express my heartfelt gratitude to our vice principals Mrs Shashikala Prabhat and Mr Ernst Shaw senior supervisor Mrs Seema Pereira for their unstinted support I extend a heartfelt thanks to the judges who have graciously accepted our kind invitation to judge today's event I'm actually very amazed as well as astonished to see that how fairly you have judged our participants your time and dedication have made it possible for us to reward students for their creative ideas the strength of a team is each individual member the strength of each member is a team and this is the success formula of the educators in the department of evs this event is marked by a team of dedicated and committed teachers of our school who have worked tirelessly towards the successful execution of Eureka India Certify Symposium my sincere gratitude to miss ambika padmanaban academic coordinator department of evs for being a motivator to encourage the team to do better and to give in their best i thank our budding speakers for making today's event very exciting and informative with their mind blowing performances your days of hard work was truly evident in today's event we value your effort and encourage you to use such opportunities as stepping stones to success in your future and dearers education is a shared commitment between dedicated teachers motivated students and enthusiastic parents with high expectations i extend a sincere and heartfelt thanks to all our well wishers parents and students for their rock solid support and encouragement finally i take leave citing a popular quote by abraham lincoln the best way to predict your future is to create it thank you ayush learning something new is fun so let's keep learning and keep growing 
thank you everyone for being such a wonderful audience. We, your host, Bibi Khuteja, and Sagaya Mary for this evening signing off for today. See you all next year with, with yet another season of Eureka. Thank you everyone and have a great evening.